Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here to do my December wrap-up. So in December, I read a total of eight things, which means if we look at the long history of 2018 as a reading year, I think I killed it in December. I participated in one readathon, it was the Queer Lit Readathon. If you want to hear more about my thoughts about the books that I read that week, I have a whole vlog up, so you can go and watch that. The other thing that you should know is that... how many? Three books that I'm talking about during this wrap-up I also covered in my favorites of the year video, so three of eight were on that list, which is yet another reason December killed it. But we are going to talk about these from my least favorite up to my favorite book that I read, and let's just get started. Y'all know what a wrap-up is. I'm very excited. I'm going to be back into doing these monthly, so I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. So the first book that I want to talk about, the bottom of the list, is The Prince and Her Dreamer by Kayla Bash. I talked about this in um, my 2018 releases ranked and reviewed video. Actually, I talked about a couple of these in that video. Basically, this novella was sent to me by the author to read early. It was released in December, and it is a retelling of The Nutcracker that features a central female-female romance. I don't have a ton to say about this, um, I didn't really love it, and I think that its ultimate failing was that it was far too short. It was about 75 or 80 pages long, but it tries to cover so much space that you're constantly skipping around. You never get to be invested in a scene before it's over. You don't get to know any of the characters, so you don't get to really be invested in the relationships. Like, the central relationship was nice, but there were so many different points where you were jumping around with that character and the love interest that I felt like I got to the end and I didn't fully understand either of them or the journey that they had been through for the novella that took me like an hour to read. This just could have benefited from being a lot longer, from getting into its story a lot more, from getting more invested in the fantasy world because I feel like so much of that was skipped over very quickly in exposition. I just wanted to feel more a part of this world than I did. So that meant that I didn't get to have quite as much enjoyment as I would have liked to out of this little novella. Uh, I wound up giving it like two and a half, 2.75 out of five stars. It just, it could have been longer. That's pretty much it. It's pretty much my only thought. Next, I want to talk about Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowman. Summer Bird Blue is about a main character named Rumi and she really, really loves her little sister. They create music together, and that's all Rumi wants to do for the rest of her life. And then her sister dies really tragically in a car accident, and so Rumi's kind of left to try to figure out what the hell she's supposed to do with her life now that she's lost this person. And then after that, instead of sort of trying to deal with grief together, Rumi's mom sends her away to live with her aunt in Hawaii, and this is an aunt that Rumi doesn't really know, she's never been to Hawaii, and so she's also feeling really displaced while dealing with her grief. And the other thing that this book is dealing with, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on, the other thing that this book is dealing with is Rumi trying to figure out how she identifies, so she's trying to figure out if she is on the aromantic and asexual spectrums. So there were things that this book did really well, and there were things that it didn't do quite as well. The arrow a stuff I think was done perfectly. There were a lot of points that I marked that were just Rumi trying to explain how she felt and the words asexual and aromantic are both used in this book, and there's um, a lot of different points in this book where you feel like it's going to be pushing a romance between Rumi and a character that she meets in Hawaii, but the more that she explores her sexuality and where she fits on the ace and arrow spectrums, the more that she is kind of like, I don't know that I really want a relationship based on how I feel about people in general. So I really liked how all that was dealt with. Um, the biggest struggle that I had with Summer Bird Blue was... Rumi is very angry, and I think that she's very entitled to that anger, but it leaves a real disconnect for, like, the first half of this book, that you're trying to understand Rumi and identify with her, but she is so cruel to absolutely everyone who's trying to help her that it just makes it a little bit harder. I think this book hit its stride more in its second half, where you start to understand Rumi better, where she starts to understand herself better. So I really wanted to love this book, but I wound up just kind of liking it, and I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Next, I want to talk about The Legend of Korra Turf Wars Parts 1, 2, and 3. 
all three of them here, um, and these are by Michael Dante DiBartino with art by Irene Ko. These are really good! If you like Legend of Korra, I think that you will like these comics. It does a good job exploring Asami and Korra's relationship, um, which is very, very sweet. It does a good job exploring sort of the ramifications of how the Legend of Korra series ended. There are a lot of questions left unanswered and a lot of things that you're kind of unsure about how everyone in Republic City is going to deal with things, and these do a really good job of exploring that. Um, I thought it was a very solid series. I gave every single one of these four out of five stars, and I would definitely love to read more Korra comics, which is exactly how I feel about the Avatar The Last Airbender comics. I think that the comics for both of these shows are done incredibly well and are excellent companions to their respective series. So, really liked these. Moving on, I want to talk about Next Year in Havana by Chanel Cleeton. This one's kind of unusual for me because it is a uh, romance, and I am not one who generally reaches for that genre, but sort of what this book is about is it follows Marisol starting in 2017 and she is traveling to Cuba to spread her grandmother's ashes. Um, her grandmother has recently passed away, she was exiled from Cuba when she was quite young, but she always has wanted to return to Cuba even if it was just to have her ashes spread there. So this is about Marisol exploring Cuba, visiting the places her grandmother knew when she lived there, and also um, starting to fall for a handsome, intelligent guy named Luis. This is also about Marisol's grandmother in Cuba in 1958. It turns out that she had this secret romance that no one in her family knew about with a revolutionary. So, two parallel storylines, um, two separate romances, this was really gorgeous. I loved the first couple of chapters. They're gorgeously descriptive, and I think that the way that it talks about Cuba continues from beginning to end to be very engaging, beautiful. I feel like I learned a lot about Cuba. Um, reading this book made me realize that I don't know that much about Cuba, and, like, I learned a lot reading this book. But also, I was really invested in both of the relationships that I was reading about. I read it, I loved it, and immediately, immediately wanted to get my hands on the companion story that's coming out in 2019. What's it called? It's called When We Left Cuba, and it is about Marisol's great aunt. So I definitely want to read that. I really, really enjoyed this book, and I wound up giving it four out of five stars. It is not even 3 p.m., and the sun has just vanished. Why? So the next three books I'm going to be talking about, I cover all three of them in my Favorites of the Year video, so if you've already watched that, you've probably already heard my thoughts, but, you know, maybe you want to hear more of them. Stick around and hear them. So first of all, I want to talk about The Poison Within by Rachel Marie Piercy. This is a YA fantasy. It was just released at the very beginning of uh, January. I read it as an editor, so I'm not going to tell you a star rating because I was an editor and I don't really feel comfortable talking about a specific star rating for a book I was that involved in, but I did love it and it was on my favorites of the year video, so, you know, like, you, you understand. I loved the book. This is very much a fairy tale esque story for a lot of the little bits that make up the plot. It's about a queen named Raya, and in her kingdom she's known as the Black Queen. She's known for doing a lot of really terrible things, but when we first join her, she is on the run from an assassin, and she winds up running to a place called the Ashen Forest, and they exist to offer refuge to people, and Raya decides to hide there. While she is hiding, while she is recovering from running, she is also getting to know the kingdom's princess, and the two of them start developing feelings for one another. So this is a fantasy book, it is a redemption storyline, and it is also about royal ladies falling for one another. All of the good things. It's really gorgeously written, it just captures this setting in a way that I adore. I just think that this universe feels very lived in and it's very clear that Rachel very much understands the places that she is writing about because the, the writing of these specific locations is... I love it. I also really love the relationship between the two women in this book. I think that it does a very good job of carrying the story and dealing with a redemption storyline, which is one of my fave plots. Like, I love redemption stories and I think it's done incredibly well. Like I said though, this book is already out in the world. It came out at the beginning of January. I definitely think you should read it, especially since it was one of my favorite books of the year. I really loved it. So, yeah, go check out The Poison Within. 
it was great. I also want to talk about I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This book comes out in May of this year, May 2019. This says May 28th, but I'm pretty sure that the release date got moved up a couple of weeks, so I don't think that this is the correct date anymore. This book is about non-binary teen Ben DeBacker who comes out to their parents and then is kicked out of their home. So they make contact with their estranged sister Hannah and they move in with Hannah and her husband Thomas and start at a new school. Ben only comes out to them and to their therapist and other than that really wants to remain under the radar at this new school, just wants to finish out senior year and be done with it. But they end up meeting this boy named Nathan who they become friends with and eventually maybe more. I feel like I have talked about this book a ton and it's because I love it and I think everyone in the world is anticipating it. They should be because this is a gorgeously wonderful book. It's funny, it is sweet, despite the fact that it is dealing with incredibly difficult topics, it finds a way to be light-hearted and nice. I love these characters, I love Ben, I love Nathan, I adore Hannah who is the sweetest big sister, but like it also deals with the complexities of Ben's relationship with their sister and the fact that Hannah left that house when she was very young and so there are a lot of like complex feelings there. I don't know, there are a lot of really wonderful things about this book. Um, the romance is another one of my absolute favorite aspects of this book. You guys are all anticipating it. You should be. It's lovely. It's wonderful. You have a right to be excited. I wound up giving this four and a half out of five stars. I loved it. And the last book I'm gonna talk about is I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman, which again was on my favorites of the year list. This book follows two characters, Angel, who loves a band called The Ark, she's obsessed with them, um, like so much of her life right now is focused on her love of The Ark that it feels like her love of that band kind of defines her, and it's also about Jimmy, who is the front man for The Ark, and dealing with more and more creative pressure, more and more pressure from fame, from feeling like he no longer has any privacy. So it's about all of that. It's about Angel for the first time meeting her best online friend. It's about Jimmy dealing with sort of his complex feelings about the other members of the arc. And it is lovely. Anything you've ever heard me say about Alice Oseman's writing, it's true about this book. It is heartfelt and sweet. It celebrates love. It celebrates finding a person in your life who understands you. It has a hijabi main character in Angel and a biracial trans guy main character in Jimmy. And there are also a lot of other side characters who are queer and are people of color. So, like, super diverse, but that's kind of what you get with Alice Oseman, that's what she writes. I love the way that Alice Oseman writes dialogue between characters. I think it's funny and sweet, and I love that she writes people finding their platonic soulmates. It's like a fave thing of mine in general for all of the wonderful stories in the world. Like, I just want Alice Oseman to write a hundred books about that. I would read every single one of them. I loved this book and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. I love it. Okay guys, that is it. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of December. Have you read any of these books? Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of them or any of these books on your TBR. Let me know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!